My name is Tom Kistler. I am the president of Save Collier Lake, Inc. Uh, Save, Call yeah. Save Collier Lake is referred to by folks in the Fish and Boat Commission as a friends group. And I guess every time one of these lakes needs some help and needs to be restored, community volunteers come forward and, and form a friends group. And as I stand here, I look and I see an awful lot of friends of Collier Lake, people who uh, tell me they grew up coming here or they live nearby or they just look forward to the opportunities that, that Flatwater presents uh, with Collier Lake. And it has been an honor and a privilege for me to be president and to uh, help put the, this program together, um, put together the restoration of the lake. Collier Lake was built about 50 years ago, and I'm sure that you'll get some of the history about that later, but it's should be set for the next 50 years. So thank you to the Fish and Boat Commission and to Senator Corman and uh, Representative Benninghoff and the legislature for funding this. And we're back in business. I don't want to take too much time. My, my principal responsibility today is to introduce to you the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. John Arway has been a tremendous uh, friend of this effort. He and I have had direct communications. He has allowed me to call him and email him at any time with questions or suggestions or complaints. Uh, and uh, it's been a very uh, good relationship that we developed. And uh, I consider John to be a friend of Collier Lake. John? Thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks, thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, I really appreciate being here today. And uh, being able to celebrate the rebirth of Collier Lake. And I, one thing I have to tell you, Tom, I, there's only one problem with the project that I can see, and that is you're going to have to change your name. <laughs> you're going to have to add a D to your first word. It's saved Collier Lake now. So I guess that's a new round of T-shirts for you. All right, good. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a, uh, a short road uh, for this project. Uh, unlike most of our high-hazard dam projects, repairs or, or, or um, um, rebuilds, uh, this this uh, project's been on a super fast track. Uh, I can't tell you how much hard work that you've put in that's really paid back for the project. Um, my staff has gone above and beyond to get this project on track, keep it on track, and ahead of schedule, believe it or not. You don't hear government say that too often, that you know we're ahead of schedule, and we can say that honestly for this, for this project. Uh, I, I, I want to thank, um, in particular, Tom and uh, Safe Call Your Lake, Inc., uh, and all the members that have really come together to do this. Um, it's a, not only an important project for recreation, but it's also an important project for local businesses. Um, anglers and boaters, believe it or not, spend $1.2 billion a year in our state fishing and boating. And we're a major league sport, believe it or not, and you're part of it. And we really appreciate your interest in it and uh, support to help continue it. Uh, one of the problems with our sport, much like some of the other sports, is trying to keep the interest in the sports. It's great to see younger faces in the crowd today and the kids that are here and I've got a special uh, experience for you to help help participate in uh, today. Uh, but but uh, one of the challenges is we're losing more people from fishing and boating uh, than we're gaining. And uh, so events like this and, and the recreation of lakes like this really uh, rejuvenates the interest in fishing and boating. The media coverage we get from projects like this really uh, tell people those 90 percent of us that don't fish or boat in our state, only 10 percent of us do, uh, explain to people why it's important to get outdoors, and this is Get Outdoors Weekend. I was up in Scranton at Francis Slocum State Park yesterday celebrating uh, the Great Outdoors PA, and we, we went on the first bus trip from, um, from Scranton to Francis Slocum State Park, and it's the only uh, dedicated route to a, uh, a state park in the state. So maybe we can use that as a model for Collier and get the Transportation Authority here in State College to have a bus route out to Collier Lake to bring people out here to enjoy it. It makes it much more convenient. Um, it saves money. Uh, there are actually rod racks on their buses, uh, bike racks, and we're hopeful to see kayak racks on the buses one day. So, um, so uh, if, if, if we can get you to the lake more easily, I think uh, more people will enjoy it. And uh, that's some of the challenges, future challenges that we'll have. And we're anxious to continue to work with Safe Call Your Lake to make this place a, a special place for the local community. Um, one of the things that, um, happened was when we drained the lake, um, we uh, salvaged the fish out of the lake as many as we could, transferred those over to Poe Lake. Um, some of you probably fish for those. I know Shopee is in the audience somewhere. He, 
he caught some of those uh, Collier Lake uh, bluegills out of Poe Lake. Um, and, and, uh, and we did that because we wanted to make sure that um, those fish were put to good use. Um, however, my staff, uh, some of the innovative ones, and I have to give credit to Bill Savage and, uh, and others uh, from our Pleasant Gap office, decided to save a couple bluegill fry. And they, they put them in an aquarium and, and one lived, and they named it Gilly. So uh, I have Gilly the bluegill here in the bucket, and I'm going to ask the children in the crowd to, to come down and help me release Gilly back home. Um, and, and today will be a special day for Gilly, too. Uh, we also have a fish truck, uh, as you see, over to, to my left. And uh, there are 30 or 40,000 fathead minnows, not flathead minnows, uh, in that truck. A lot of people call them flatheads, but that's a catfish. And we certainly don't want flathead catfish in the Susquehanna River Basin. So we're going to stock fathead minnows. And some of you probably wonder why we're going to put uh, tiny bait fish in the lake first. But as part of our fisheries management practices, that we use to get the bait fish established first. The bait fish will feed off of zooplankton, phytoplankton in the, in the water column in the lake as it develops. Uh, they'll grow to be bigger size and then we'll gradually release other sport fish uh, to the lake like uh, largemouth bass and crappie and bluegill and yellow perch and chain pickerel that everybody's com commonly caught before. And gradually the lake will, will come back and uh, one of the things we know is, is that new lakes are much more productive productive than old lakes. Now Collier is a little bit different in that we're able to refresh the lake uh, water in Collier because of the bypass channel and, and the way we manage the lake with fresh water from Sinking Creek. Uh, but the trouble is you see the brown staining in the lake. It's a uh, tannic acid that comes out of the, the wetland and the headwaters of Fishing Creek and Bear Meadows. And it's, it's always been brown when you come over. It kind of looks like a Pocono Lake or stream when you, when you, when you, when you see it. But uh, thanks to Partners like Glen O'Harbaker, who donated uh, three or four hundred tons of lime uh, to lime the lake bed, that'll keep the water quality in the lake uh, neutralized, uh, so that uh, we can keep it productive, and then gradually over time, and, and that'll it'll stay that way. Our biologists will will pay attention to the lake, monitor the water quality of the lake, and make sure it doesn't get too acidic, which really impacts the fish and the kinds of fish that can live in it. So we'll keep the lake monitored. We'll uh, we'll, we'll continue to refresh it with with lime as we need to as we've done in the past, and uh, really create a productive fishery, even more productive than it was. Because uh, Collier, just like most lakes, they age. And as they age, they get less productive. And if you can refresh them like this and rejuvenate them, they really become more productive again for a period of five or 10 years. So I'm anxious to come back. My, uh, I, I had my kids fishing here at Collier when it was very productive as a young lake. And we would catch nine and 10 inch bluegills out of the lake, and they actually got some citation bluegills out of the lake, and that's not ones where they got fined for, those are ones that they got, they, they got recognized for, and they have little certificates on the wall, and I'm sure some of you and maybe your children or grandchildren have those certificates too, and that's really the ultimate goal, is to get those fish back to that, that size and get the people catching citation fish again out of Collier. Uh, so with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop for a, a little bit and, and uh, let Gilly rest until um, we have time at the end of the program to come back and and again, uh, I'll call up the kids and we'll, we'll re release Gilly right here in the, at the edge of the lake. Um, but we have a, a, a couple of, um, uh, uh, well, first I want to acknowledge some of my staff that were instrumental in, in, in getting the lake project ahead of schedule and to where it is today. Michelle Jacoby, Michelle, raise your hand. Michelle's our chief engineer and she really worked uh, long hours and burned the midnight oil on, on a lot of the work that she did here. Uh, Judge Kissler really kept her busy. Uh, is, is uh, uh, um, uh, in, in the phone calls that he made uh, just to keep things motivated and really we didn't need motivation but it was good to have you behind us when we needed you especially on the legislative front. Um, Andy Shields, Andy, Andy's our Bureau Director of Fisheries. Andy uh, coordinated uh, fish salvage as well as uh, the removal of fish and now the restocking of the fish in the lake. Brian Wisner, Director of Hatcheries is here. Brian, raise your hand. Uh, Brian is uh, responsible for making sure uh, the lake is stocked and and uh, follows the prescriptions of our fisheries management program. Uh, ben Page, uh, I don't think Ben's here or anyone from Habitat, but they were instrumental in getting those habitat structures out. I'm sure most of you saw those in the bed of the lake. Those will provide homes for those small fathead minnows and the forage fish that uh, the big fish feed on, and uh, also allow structure for plankton to grow on that fish come in and, and feed from. Um, so that was an important project. We appreciate uh, the Save Collier Lake's involvement in that habitat project. Uh, we couldn't have done it without your, your, uh, your help. Um, and also our law enforcement programs here, Don Laver is representing law enforcement. We'll make sure that we keep the fish safe 
and all, also the angler safe, along with the U.S. Coast Guard that's here to do boat inspections. We want to make sure that anglers that use Collier Lake stay safe and also abide by our laws and regulations so that other people have a chance to catch those fish too. And then finally, um, we have a, a, a current commissioner and a former commissioner here today. Uh, Bill Sabatos is the district commissioner. Bill traveled in today from Brockway. And uh, uh, I'm going to give Bill a chance to say a few words. And also Ed Miller. Most of you know Ed. Ed's a local, um, uh, actually was responsible for the design and construction of the lake back in the late 1960s. So uh, Ed would like to say a few words too. So Bill, if you want to go first. Ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Bill Savitas, Commissioner of PA Fish and Boat. My name is Bill Savitas, Commissioner of PA Fish and Boat. Um, this lake has a lot of history, and I'm sure Ed Miller is going to talk about uh, Project 70 and how this thing got built. Um, as a commissioner, I remember that we, uh, myself and other commissioners, we didn't have the money to rebuild it, but we did get the money to, the, to design this lake. So the design was done. So when this group got formed uh, and the area citizens stepped up to the plate, uh, which we commend you uh, for raising money and pushing this project. Uh, this project was ready to go because we had the design sitting there. All we had to do is dust it off. But at any rate, uh, also I wanted to thank Representative uh, Benioff and uh, Senator Corman because definitely this thing went on a fast track. As you can see, this thing got built. I never saw anything built so fast. So. Uh, that's all the, uh, I have to say, and you're to be congratulated for all the work you've done. So on behalf of the commission, we thank you for, for all the support that you've given the commission. Thank you. And next, uh, former director, Ed Miller. Thank you very much, John. Can you hear me, folks? There's two names that nobody here will probably recognize, but I think that I should mention. And that is the person who designed the dam and also the construction engineer who built the dam. Keep it a little closer to your mouth. Yep. Okay. Is that better? Talking to the top of it. There you go. Roy Frank, who lived in Lock Haven, was the design engineer and a gentleman from Belfont by the name of Eugene Smith was the construction engineer on site. This was over 50 years ago, and they both deceased, but I felt we should mention their names. There's two things about this lake that most people do not know also. One is the original dam was designed to go from this point over here across the valley, and we had the dam under design at that time when Project 70 was passed. And for those of you who may remember, Project 70 gave acquisition money to a number of the state uh, agencies, and we were able to acquire additional lands from uh, a fellow named Miller in Center Hall and a fellow named McClellan in State College, and relocate the dam to where you see it today. The big advantage of that is we gained all this water area and all this shoreline area of these two draws behind you. The other thing that most people don't know about the lake, but John did mention it, because of the rather acidic water that comes out of the Bear Meadows Swamp, our biologists at that time were concerned about maintaining the water quality that would make for a good fishery. So at that time, we decided we would do something that I don't know that anybody else has ever done for a lake this size. We built a bypass canal and put the necessary controls in at the upper end of the lake so that we can bypass the stream when the acidity is higher than what we want in the lake. Uh, unfortunately, it was perhaps that bypass canal that caused some of the leakage that started some of the problems with the dam. However, I too want to thank all the people that were involved. They've already been mentioned by name, including the local uh, representatives and Senate senator, and certainly Judge Kistler. I do also want to mention one name that you haven't heard, Scott Miller, 
who was very instrumental in handling the computer and internet work that supported the effort. So with that, I say let's enjoy the lake for 50 more years. I'm delighted that we've been able to enjoy it this long, and the 50 more years is just a bonus. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. And it's pretty obvious that uh, Ed Miller and Bill Sabatos are very proud of the history uh, that we, we've had over uh, the course of the last 150 years. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this is our anniversary year, year too. This is uh, the birthday celebration, part of it for the Fish and Boat Commission. And we were created in 1866, and uh, we're 150 years old this year. And this is a great way to celebrate a birthday. So um, we've got a history on uh, uh, publications coming out. and. Call, call Your Lake will be prominent in that history. So um, today I'd also, uh, I got the great privilege to introduce um, Carrie Benihoff. Carrie's been a great supporter of not only anglers and boaters in our state over the time that he's been at the legislature, but also the fish that, and the other aquatic life that live in our lakes, including timber rattlesnakes, right, Carrie? Yeah. And, um, and uh, Carrie is here today to, to, uh, to help us celebrate and tell us a little bit about the legislative story that went on behind the scenes uh, with how the lake got funded. I have to say, um, Senator Cormo is going to be here today, and he's, he has some family um, problems or circumstances come up that uh, where he can't attend. So, Carrie here is here to represent the uh, the legislature, and and uh, Carrie, I just want to say thanks from uh, the people, the Fish and Boat Commission, and the Fish for the good work that you've done. Thank you. Because I'm representing two people doesn't mean I'm going to speak twice as long. I actually just wanted to give a shout out to the rest of you. To me, this is really a happy day here in Happy Valley. This is not just about this small community here, but I think a county as a whole. It was really neat to see people coming together. So many times people come to our offices thinking we're going to fix and cure everything. But really, there's nothing stronger than the public getting around an issue and a public input that makes a difference. And i got to be honest with you, it's fun to advocate. Uh, obviously, we try to use a little muscle sometimes to advocate stronger for our legislative districts. Uh, John will tell you there's a lot of these dams across the state that need same kind of repairs and it's heavy competition competition to try to get those dollars so for us to be able to advocate to be able to say the local people came together foreign their own organization raised their own money makes our job advocating for some of your tax dollars to come back here it's easy to praise us but we're just giving you back your own money and sometimes money from other places and I don't want you to think I underestimate that but it is nice to get something here in a domestic level done I think about the times I spent out here with my own children paddling around the water. They never realized, but when I would take one of them out in the boat at a time, they were actually uh, in seclusion, and so they had to listen to Dad for whatever lecture I was going to give them because they weren't rowing the boat. It took them a while to figure that out, and henceforth they don't ride with me anymore. But I'm just going to close on the fact that Jake and I are honored to do this. We appreciate um, Judge Kisser stepping up, and each one of you that are wearing the shirts, uh, some that don't have saved the lake, this is your asset. You know, my pastor did a sermon this morning about pausing and just taking time to enjoy what's around us. I would tell you to do that. If you look out across this lake, I've always been mesmerized that there's not an inch that you look around here, there isn't something beautiful to see. And how many of our lives get so darn busy, we just don't take time to do that. 10% fishers and boaters, let's jack that up. We want 20%, 25%. Our young people are looking for something to do to entertain themselves. I just read an article not too long ago where it said today's generation is getting bored because they have access to everything by the click of a button and an app. Well, send them on a treasure hunt. Send them out to find things. My parents probably still have shale laying around the house where I used to crack open this stuff looking for fossils all the time because I was going to find that million dollar fossil and I was going to be rich, but it taught me to be adventurous. And so for all of you that brought somebody young out here with you, congratulations, including young ladies, still got one in her belly. We're excited for you. Yay, our youngest Collier Lake follower. Thank you very much for having us here. I'm honored. We're here to cheer you on. Truly a happy day in Happy Valley. And it happened because of each of you and your support. The Fish Commission, you guys go unrecognized a lot, but we do appreciate your service. Bill and Jim, it's great to have you here giving the history. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Let's hit the water.